All right. It's past the hour of 6 to 30 p.m. Call the North Borough Fire Building Committee to order. Um, first item on the agenda is the approval of the minutes from the December 14, 2023 meeting. Madam Chair, oh. motion. We're not going to be showing the presentation on this wall. This okay. <laughs> I'm not going to have to do that. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Oh, you guys can go ahead and take your time. Yeah, sorry. Take, take I realize it's been a couple <laughs> I have, to, I have it closed so Dawn doesn't get blinded. Yes, the last time we did it over here, so Yeah, I was just changing things because that's the kind of guy I am. Changing it up. Yeah. Okay. Madam Chair, a motion to accept the minutes as written. Okay. Last meeting. Second. Motion's been made and seconded. Those in favor? Aye. 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 You. You're abstaining, aren't you? Well, I, I wasn't sure she if I should abstain. I was sort of here. Oh, you were there. That was right. Yeah, but I didn't hear every word, so. No, it's okay. You're fine. Okay. I, I'd forgotten that you were with us. I was there. I watched the okay. it's great. All right, discussion on joint meeting results. Yeah, Chief. I just saw, I, I put that on the agenda because I thought maybe uh, it warranted us discussing whether or not we thought the meeting went well, if we got anything out of it. Um, I thought it went fairly well. I thought we were able to get a good exchange of ideas. Um, I know it was kind of probably kind of tough for you, Diane, remotely, but John, what do you think? It was. There was a good dialogue. People were engaged from the respective committees. Um, there was some thoughtful questions raised. Uh, I thought we, we that our, our team here did a great job uh, presenting it and fielding questions. And I think people walked away, you know, with a good idea of you know what what the project is as of now, and ultimately go through the process when we vet them through the respective committee processes. Okay. Uh, well, one of the things that I, I I did want to mention that came up was there was a lot of discussion about parking. And I think it's really important. I tried to make the point that night, but I wanted to make it again. Uh, Excuse me? Oh, sure. Just show up. Welcome. I wanted to make it. Uh, Is this Mitch's chair? That's your chair, buddy. Your chair. Um, I wanted to make it, make it clear. I made it clear that night that this is not a parking project. This is a fire station project. And if there's additional parking down, that is developed because of it downtown, that's a benefit. But that's not the purpose of this. Um, there was concern because of the site, whether or not we could put additional parking down there now or in the future. And as I stated that night, if the town wants to put money into it in the future and put parking up back, that's fine. But that's not the purpose of this thing. The purpose of this committee is to design and uh, hopefully get past the fire station for that, uh, for that location. Um, anything else, Cap? Did you have anything that came up that night? Tom, we're just talking about uh, a recap of the meeting. Uh, I said I thought it went fairly well. Um, I thought there was some good input from everyone. There was a lot of focus on parking, and it just, again, that's not the purpose of this. If there's parking that is gained because of it, that's just an extra benefit, but that wasn't the intent. So anything that you wanted to comment on about the meeting or anything? Uh, I think their preference for brick was good to hear, so mm -hmm. I think that's where we were headed in the first place. Um, maybe we can talk about the difference between CMU backup wall versus steel studs, but that's down the road. Um, I'm glad they brought up this concept of New England architecture, which doesn't exist in our master plan. There are two mentions of New England in the design guidelines. One where it says in the purpose that we want the structures in the downtown to be uh, compatible or consistent with New England architecture. And then there's some mention of New England materials, brick, stone, clapboards. But this concept of New England style doesn't exist. We have a lot of very beautiful historic styles, but they're American historic styles. They're not just in New England. But mm -hmm. I think this may come up in your subsequent meetings, and you need just, <clears throat> just to be comfortable with how you handle the notion that this is in our master plan or this is in our bylaws it's not um so okay that's all i wanted to add i i, I did like it, it's funny they mentioned uh, lisa mentioned uh, arch doors and we had no no, no kidding like a couple days before mentioned i want arch doors you know and and i, I had all these pictures and it, it, it definitely had already been looking on pictures of things of doors that we like so it was funny that she mentioned that because yeah that, that is a traditional firehouse look the arch doors now there's different ways to do it and we've discussed all the different you know possible different ways you can make it look arch but it's not really arched and you know the doors we want to put the bifold doors uh, i think the red bifold doors with an arch uh, look it really is to me is an old fire station and and, uh, and i really like that look so 
I think overall it went well. So I, and I appreciate all the members of, of design review that were there, the members of master plan implementation, uh, making a special trip down there for us that day and, and all of you guys obviously and Diana coming in remotely even though she wasn't feeling well and of course our board. So uh, uh, overall I was very happy with the way it went. So thank you. I do have one point to say today. Um, to build on what Tom was talking about, I thought the precedent study was excellent because you really showed the diversity of the building styles and typologies that we have in Northboro. And I think that's an important narrative regardless of where the design lands. There's so much diversity that it's not going to be that hard to design something that can be very contextual. Mm -hmm. So I thought that was a, a really good step in showing everyone. No, I agree with you. I think when you look at the center of town and you look at the different buildings, you could design almost anything and it would fit in the center of town with one building or another. So, yeah. um, but I think we did get an idea of what they were looking for. And at least I think I feel a little more comfortable now with this whole concept of New England building. So I guess I'm going to ask our, our team as well. Did you guys get what we were, what we were looking for? Did you, did, were they able to help us out with? I think we brought a lot Good. from them, you know, and um, <coughs> we were already looking at materials or products. I think we diversified the application to the other materials that um, work with it. Um, we heard the arch and you're going to see a bunch of arches tonight because <laughs> we heard you loud and clear that, you know, we want to explore that. Um, and then we also heard that the committee seemed to be comfortable with different forms. Um, they weren't um, driven by, you know, only a form, which is very helpful for us because uh, I think they understood, the, you know, the, the um, ramifications of very huge pitch roofs on these big, big buildings. So that was, those, all those things were really good. And we, we still have quite a bit of work to do, <laughs> um, but um, that was really helpful for us. So, and I think it was a good dialogue. I think um, we'll see what happens, but you know. <coughs> so. Good stuff. Okay. All right, how about design updates? Okay. So okay. You, you want this screen on? Yeah. yeah. Madam you Chair, you may want to move over here because you'll get blinded if you don't. Is it just a power button? No, no, no. I got okay. that. You, you got to open it. <laughs> you got to open it up. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, there you go. <coughs> okay, so now can we get it? It's, it's a little angle piece down there. Just that, right? Oh. Um, maybe the uh, arrows. Stone. Yeah. There you go. There you go. Say when. Uh, uh, that's probably good. Good. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, no, no, we no. can't not yet because. Oh, I have it over here. Found that. Okay. So um, the pres uh, presentation tonight, we're going to be talking about um, where we are in the design process. We are going to talk a little bit about. <laughs> 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 okay. I meant that. <laughs> um, a little bit about where we are with the site design, and then uh, the concept development. We're going to show you um, two plan options we've been working on. And then where we are uh, with uh, the elevations, we started exploring them a little beyond what you've seen before. We'll update you on the schedule and then talk about the next steps. Um, so for the site, um, this is the um, plan option. We've been calling it 2A, which is the um, more developed plan that we've been working with uh, the fire department on. Um, and we've been working with the civil engineers and looking at the site a little bit more. So. Let's see, does the pointer work? The pointer works, that's great. Okay, so um, in this uh, scheme, we've got parking for 23 staff and 30 guests. Um, the public parking is over on this side of the building. Um, and then we've got the numbered spaces are the administration staff um, spaces. So they're sort of split up in the two parking lot areas. The one off um, that, that the public comes in has a few um, administrative spaces assigned to it. And then most of the staff comes in on this side of the apparatus bay. You can park all along here. Um, so any of the public spaces are the immediate ones as you enter? On the right. Yeah, yes. Correct, on the right, right over here, yeah. Yep. Yep. And, um, you know, the important thing here is that the, the orientation of the building, we've talked a lot about with the department and uh, we've talked to the committee about this too and they're most comfortable 
um, having the apparatus bays on the side of the building because of the sight lines as the road curves and because of access um, into Dunkin' Donuts over here and making sure that there's no conflicts with the apparatus apron and, uh, um, and the traffic coming in and out of Dunkin' Donuts. Um, so this scheme and the, the shape of the building, keeping um, the apparatus bays sort of forward, not having any of the administration spaces pulled forward of the apparatus bays so that as the trucks come out, they've got a nice clear line of sight um, going down the street and also into the two drives there. That's really important. The ADA is going to require some handicap spots, I assume? Yeah, we've got some handicap spots right that's over that's here. That's yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's what I figured. Yeah. Thank you. And this, again, is um, a scheme, <coughs> excuse me, a drawing, <coughs> excuse me, that we've been developing at HKT, and the civil engineers have been looking at this, and they've been commenting on it, but they're going to start, you know, working on it and, and developing it a little more. So it's still um, very conceptual, and, and um, they'll be layering a lot more information on it as we, as we move forward. Uh, but the important thing, we've got the separation, public versus staff, as we talked about. So it's all designed around safety and trying to... Um, um, make the site work for the department as much as possible. We've talked about where the building is placed on the site and what that means for the retaining walls. There will be some retaining walls around here, but all of this is doable. There's nothing in the design that, um, or nothing about the site that we've seen that, that precludes you from building this building here. Um, it's definitely buildable. Every site that we run into has challenges. This site has challenges, um, but nothing that we see indicates that there's um, anything that we can't handle on this so site. We'll so yeah. uh, there, there was some concern from some, some parties that that there, uh, in town that there was, that we were trying to fit a site, a building onto a site that wasn't appropriate for it. And I, I, I think that that comes from the fact that the original design was done without a survey in mind, without, right, so it was done, and now you, you discussed some changes, there were some issues with how far back it was and so, and although that may make it more challenging, that certainly doesn't eliminate the, the, the site at all. Right, not at all. And I think th that's really common in projects where as you, as you learn more, you, you, you know, as you get farther in the design, you learn more and there's more that you have to um, account for and adjust for. And I think that happens on every project. So, um, you know, it, it wasn't what you expected, but it's nothing that we can't, we can't manage and Thank handle you. with the engineers. So. Okay, so that is um, the... Um, First scheme, and um, so we talked a little bit about the parking and the drive aisles. Everything's accessed off. Whoops. Um, did we lose the other option? Or no, we've got the plans no, right after. Afterwards. Sorry. Yeah. yeah, okay. Okay, so um, these are the floor plans. This is um, uh, the first floor plan, and we've got uh, the entrance into the lobby here, and the training room is located right off of the, the lobby. Um, then the administration spaces for the fire department are all located on the front, on the first floor. Um, the admin person has a good view of the lobby to uh, be the meter and greeter for the public coming in. We have a lockdown from that point for private spaces. And then you've got all of the apparatus bays and the apparatus support spaces located here on the first floor. Uh, we've been working with the department and uh, internally to make sure that we get a flow that really works through here to have um, a good uh, uh, workflow for um, getting through hot and cold zones and, and decontaminating the firefighters as they come into the station, making sure that they can get into the decon room and the laundry, get their gear put away, use the showers and toilet rooms if they need to before they move out of this area of the station into um, administration or into living quarters. And I think we've got a flow that's working pretty well there. Uh, we've got uh, the training tower uh, located in front of the building, which gives us some um, opportunities on the elevation as well. And then the on the second floor, we've got the living quarters. Uh, we have all of the, um, the uh, dormitory bunk rooms up in this area of the building. Uh, we did revise the bunk rooms, um, I think since the last time you saw it, um, so that we put the lockers outside of the bunk rooms, which uh, we've done in other stations. It gives them a little bit of flexibility at change of shifts. If somebody's um, been up all night on call, they could you know, sleep a little longer if they need to, and someone can come in and put their their um, belongings into a locker and not disturb them. Um, it's a kind of a nice solution. Uh, we have the day room and kitchen here. They have access to a roof deck where um, they could have dining. They could have um, some little planters for some um, some vegetables or whatever out there. We've got some mechanical spaces, fitness room, which also has access to uh, roof here, uh, toilet and shower rooms. 
um, and then a pole giving vertical access down to the, um, to the apparatus phase. So that is the first scheme. So this is the um, option number three that we've been working on. And this one, if you remember, we were trying to uh, minimize as much as we could the footprint on the site to try to um, reduce the impact of some of these retaining walls. Um, the hope was that if we had a smaller footprint here, we could get the parking tighter to the building um, and we could pull this retaining wall back out of the hillside a little bit here. So in this scheme, um, we are are designing a two-story element in this part of the building um, for the administration on the second floor and then we are putting living quarters up above the apparatus space here um, sort of on um, two and a half stories I guess we say. <laughs> two stories. <laughs> yeah, it's hard. Um, and uh, so the, in an attempt to minimize the footprint here. Um, all the other elements that we showed you earlier are, are the same. We've still got the split for the uh, public parking in this parking lot here with a few administration spaces and then um, the uh, fire department parking on this side of the building uh, with access into the apparatus phase in the back. So we have that split for safety again in this scheme. And we still have all the, the lines of sight and all um, getting um, going down the street. So. Um, looking at the plans here, again, uh, you come in the front door here into the lobby. The training and EOC room is over here. Um, in this case, there is no meter and greeter on the first floor, and that um, is one thing to note about this scheme. There would need to be um, some sort of phone or um, a screen to um, video chat with the person on the second floor, and, and a visitor to the station would really be locked down into this zone or even into the vestibule until someone um, let them into the building and directed them to go up to the upper floors. But um, from the, the uh, lobby vestibule here, once someone was directed in, they could be let into this stair to get up to the second floor or over here to this elevator to get to the second floor. But they would be locked down to this area until they were um, allowed beyond. Um, our, um, our operation spaces are still over here. We still have a good, um, separation and flow for uh, the hot and cold zones over in this area here. So you come from the apparatus phase into decon, into laundry, and then either into gear or over into the toilet shower rooms over here. We've got some, admin, um, some mechanical, um, electrical spaces over here and um, um, more support spaces over here. In this scheme, because of where the, or the um, living quarters are over the apparatus phase, we actually have two poles. Um, on either side, you'll see as we go up, and I should say they're actually um, split poles because the height is so great from the um, second floor or living quarters down to the apparatus bay for safety reasons. We're designing it so that you go down one pole to an intermediate level, you get off, and you go down another pole to get down <coughs> to the lower level. On the second floor, we've got the administration spaces, so uh, someone coming up would come up either the elevator or the stair here and wind up in this lobby. Here's the meter and greeter, the admin person, and uh, visitors are locked down into the <coughs> lobby at this point, and then all the administration spaces are located over here. We've got a mechanical room with access to the roof for mechanical equipment here. Um, you see the pole, the two poles here, the one coming down from above and then going down to the next level. And then the mezzanine space off the apparatus bay is located over here. You see the two, the two poles in this area. In the next floor, this is the living quarters. Um, so to get to the living quarters, you can either use this stair to get up or the elevator opens up over here. We have the day room and kitchen with access to a uh, roof deck back here. Uh, we have the fitness room couple of toilet rooms, quiet study room, all of the bunk rooms back here, located on the um, back side of the building, and a couple on the front side of the building here, and then um, toilet showers, janitor, laundry spaces here. Um, because of the way this lays out, we have to add another stair into the scheme to make egress work. So if I go back for a minute, uh, you'll see for the admin and first floor, we've got the two stairs located over here, um, but then we need two stairs up on this level, and so we have two stairs located over here. So this scheme does add to the square footage a bit because of the circulation, but there are other benefits when um, you look at the site and when you look at um, 
the massing that we can talk about a little bit. Um, I, if we go back to the site plan for a minute, Mark, do you remember off the top of your head how many feet we save on this retaining wall back here in the scheme? We, we save about what, five or six feet. Five or six feet. Yeah. So the retaining wall is, right is a bit shorter right yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. And again, the engineers need to really weigh in and do some grading here. But and I think you indicated last week that that wall would be approximately 30 feet. One of the one of the yeah they first yeah. 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 Right. yeah about that yeah. so yeah. this goes a little lower um, yeah. hopefully at the high <laughs> point it's not the not the entire yeah uh, not the entire right so it's that corner right, 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 right. so if you yeah our spot grades here we're showing 304 here mm -hmm. for the pavement and then 328 right there mm -hmm. for the top of wall yeah. and again this is before the engineers grade it but us just looking at it this is about what we're seeing versus the other scheme. What do we got? 304 and 333. So um, I know you saw these the last time we met, or at least you saw the, the upper um, series of elevations comparing what the proposed fire station <coughs> massing would look like um, to the neighbors. Um, we're showing two schemes now. We're showing the, this is option 2A, where we just have the two-story element over here. And this is the massing of option 3, where we have the fire department living quarters um, up above the apparatus space. We wanted to show you the difference in the massing just compared to the neighbors. And then again, compared to some of the buildings that you're used to in town. So you see, um, in particular, you know, once we put a pitched roof on this building, how the massing really changes um, and becomes more comparable perhaps to the old town hall building. And here is um, scheme 2A. Um, these are just some of the neighboring businesses and, and um, sites that we looked at a little bit last time. Again, we're continuing to look at context, continuing to think about um, the building and its environment and what it means um, as we start designing it. Um, you've been looking at these massing models that we've been playing around with. And this, there were two that we were exploring. Um, this is the one for option 2A, um, and uh, this is the one for option 3. So we've taken the next step from these uh, massing models, and we're starting to layer in materials, um, looking a little bit more closely at massing, looking at um, details, um, in the buildings, and we're going to show you a series of um, elevations for the two schemes. Um, these are all still works in progress. We still have a lot of work to do on it, but um, it will again show you our thought process and where we're, we're moving. So this was um, a flat roof option for um, option 2A that we were looking at, and in this scheme we were starting to look at the detailing of some of the brick. You see a lot of lines here, and those would be indicative of something like a brick recess, perhaps, or these banding would be um, continuous courses of uh, perhaps a, a projecting brick or a recessed brick, something to give texture to the building. Maybe it would be a, a different um, type of brick. Um, but we're starting to look at those details and what it would mean. In this scheme, we have a number of punched window openings. Um, we um, wanted to look at what we could do to group some of those things, start to um, develop some massing. We felt like this needed a little bit more of a vertical feel to it. So um, you can see there are some subtle changes in this scheme where we start to change materials around the doors and change colors to give these openings more of a vertical feel. We start to do the same thing between some of these windows to give these a more of a vertical feel and make it feel like we have more some, of some tiers here. Um, we have uh, the way we treat this tower, it's got a bit of an asymmetric look to it with the banding on one side and the, the clock skewed over to one side, a flat <coughs> roof on top of it with a change in materials at the top. So we're just looking at different ways to break down the massing, give it some definition and, and um, explore what that does to the overall design. Um, here we start to change the roof line. We put a pitched roof over on this side of the building um, and here we start to incorporate the arches. Um, we've, everyone's been sharing lots of pictures of arches. Just a deputy, not a lot. In this scheme, we put an arch over um, every one of the um, apparatus bay doors, and then we have another um, arch element over here. Um, you can see 
we have some color changes. It's sort of subtle, but the thought that maybe they would be two different styles or of brick, two different colors of brick um, to give some um, interest to the building. Um, the um, arches themselves might be of a different color and then that banding continues um, in a larger um, base in this part of the building and, and uh, to connect over to the entrance and then have that line continue around the building, um, both in a band here and a base here uh, to try to tie the whole thing together. Um, we did this as sort of a first pass with the arches and to be perfectly honest, we we're not crazy about the arches. <laughs> I, th <laughs> I think, you know, arches traditionally are a structural element used to frame a large opening. And um, it's not what we need to do now. Um, we, we can frame with steel. We don't need to use arches. And, you know, typically they have much larger masses <coughs> in the piers that, that carry the weight of that arch. These are very narrow piers. And so it feels like to us a, a lot of stuff going on that's just not quite the right proportion and quite the right massing. So we know that you're interested in arches and so we started to explore some other opportunities with arches. What would it mean if we grouped doors together and had larger arches going over them? Here we've got um, um, the doors grouped in three groupings and these larger arches going over each of the groupings. Again, we've got a color change which sort of continues in a band running across the building and connecting into the, to the entry. Uh, we've changed materials um, to create these larger opening groupings here and picked up on that over at the um, entry. Um, and again, up here in the second floor element. So um, just another um, sort of exploration of what the arches might mean. Um, we even simplified it so there was a single arch that went over the all six of the bays here. And again, this really changes the massing where we have this larger grouping of all the doors here and we replicate it again over at the entrance um, and connect the two elements with the banding and with the, the brick recesses and all. Um, you'll see there's not a lot of variety for the window patterns that we're showing here. We've got a, a lot more exploration that we need to do on the window patterns. So um, I think that'll be the next step as we, as we move forward. But we wanted to show you where we are at the moment. So those windows and the towers, that's what happened? Yep. Yep. And then I have a question about the the, the two ladder versions of the, the arches. Mm -hmm. So my brain is wanting the darker surface to be set back as if that yeah, a little bit would be nice. It would be nice. It would be mm -hmm. nice if we could do that. Yeah. It's just an elevation study at this point. So you're okay. Yeah. Doing that yeah. There. I'm yeah. thinking about that with the anyway. Yeah, into that no, more. I, I think I think that would be nice as well. We need to look at you know what that means three dimensionally because. Um, if we could recess these areas as well as the, the entry here, what that would feel like. Yeah. I mean, I, I, so I just be fair if I don't think this is the ideal place to use an arch, architecturally speaking. But we can talk about that more later. Well, he's not a firefighter, so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Doesn't okay. matter. Form follows function. So tell me about these arches and the functionality. <laughs> well, that's so the horses can get in and out. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and you get the hay in through the tower. That's right. right. But you're creating, you know, like we're talking about, you're going to step back the further surface in order to sort of like accommodate the arch. You're going to get fussy really quickly with arches. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And fuzzy. That's why we kept it. trying to simplify it a little bit, even with the bigger ones, because the small ones are very fussy They're very and they fussy. And you don't feel right. For windows that aren't going to get so much light. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, anyway. Yep. Yeah. Continue. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, um, so <coughs> the next couple of options are showing um, option number three, where we go vertical and put the living quarters above um, the apparatus space. And again, um, the window patterns, we still need to do some more work on. But uh, you know, here's an option with the, um, the two arches and again, the banding to connect the pieces. You know, the massing really changes, but um, it starts to um, connect to these pieces a little bit more. Um, interesting. Exploration and here's one with the one arch. Um, so, the next thing we've got is the schedule. I don't know if we want to talk any more about these. If anyone has any comments, I or think we should talk about questions. These. <laughs> <laughs> you think? Yeah. Um, we can go back to the plans if we want to talk about that. Let's talk about the plans a little bit. I can, I, can, I, can I make a yep. comment or ob observation? One yep. of the pictures you put up last week was Natick. Native fire department. Yes. Yes. And there is a 
I'll use the word keystone for lack of a better description, over the doors that I thought was interesting architecturally, but that's just okay. me. But Do you mean as, the, as sort of a nod to the comment that the, the idea of an arch, that it sort of signals an opening in a different way? Something like that, yeah. If, if you saw the picture, you, you'd... It's, it's, you know, it's, it's pre a pe precast piece, I believe, because it's a pretty modern building, so it's really not a, acting as an arch. I'll take a look at that. I wouldn't um, say arch, but, uh, but I'm saying just the whole idea of, you know, somewhat New Englandy looking um, kind of caught my eye. Okay. But it was native. I mean, these schemes have definitely skewed con not out of the contemporary into a more traditional approach right now. And, you know, there's a little bit of, you know, the opening sizes, like Amy was describing, not supporting the arch, uh, you know, becomes an issue right away, um, you know, and all kinds of things like that. So, you know, again, you know, we're, we're trying to, you know, break it down, look at those, again, massing materials and details. Um, and we, we did uh, some of the earlier studies that Mark was doing with us. We were looking at um, what happens when the pieces become too um, separate from each other. We've got a photo of the native. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, uh, yeah. Um, yeah. Oh, sorry, yeah. Oh, you got a better. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 And it has a real old it's keystone. More, yeah. 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 It's got a trim piece, a little another layer, and then a, a keystone. Yeah. Yeah. Better those? Well, it has, yeah. Can you see that one? So wh what kind of door? Those are not the same kind of doors that she wants, though, right? Those are the overhead. Uh, no, those, no, those are overhead doors. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Those are not. I like the doors that you like. Yeah. That, that creates a different aesthetic because you have, it's a simpler way to respond to the arch. And I think that because of the verticality and sort of <coughs> rhythm of these doors, which I think are beautiful on the very first one, and like, yeah. I love that, but, um, I think that those two things are going to be at odds a little bit. Yeah. Can we go back to Diane's comment about pulling Pollock's function? Um, <laughs> this is Let me have it, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> no, in, in the late 1800s, H.H. H. Richardson developed these beautiful little libraries in Woburn, Malden, uh, Quincy, and North Easton. And he expressed the three major components of these libraries. There was the reading room, there was a circular stair tower, and there was the administrators. I get the sense that that strategy is latent in your design approach. It's, it's proto-modern, but it's very New England, mm -hmm. Boston architect. So I, I think that we should pursue that. Let's show the three distinct functions of our building not only in plan, but also in elevation, and then let you guys make it work as a building, as all of a piece. So that's, I think there are a lot of elements here that satisfies Diane's Well, I like Richardson. Modernity. I actually really like H.H. Richardson. I was just, that was my training. Good. But no. but I think that the discussion of the arches and these elevations, I, I have to go back to the 2A versus the 3. Uh, to me, 2A makes so much more sense. The what, what did you say? So, 2A. Uh, 2A, 2A makes more sense to me, and to the point that I think the extra four feet of the retaining wall is like really a secondary consideration. But you had mentioned when you were presenting there are some other advantages to three that I think I might not, that I think I might be missing. But it just feels more fragmented. I mean, it is intentionally spread out, and but you're having to, in some ways, compensate for that, right? Yeah. The extra yeah. stair and those right. things. I, and I think, I mean, when I say there are some benefits, I think maybe there are benefits that um, that we see from a design standpoint that maybe the fire department wouldn't agree with. <laughs> the fire department. I'll yes. speak for the fire yes, department. Speak for the fire department, please. please. So, uh, myself, the deputy captain, and anyone else who has seen these designs, all, all have their own opinion of, of what they think. And while I understand the idea of the three with the, and we, you guys know our opinion on this. It's like if we have to put the living quarters above the apparatus bay, if we have to, we'll do it. We would prefer the 2A. We like that layout better. Um, we, we like the, uh, the, the, the way with the, with the um, everything on the first floor for admin 
in the living quarters on the second floor. We think it makes it much more conducive to working with people coming in and out. You know, I know we have the elevator, we have the AD, you know, for ADA and all that, but we just, yeah, let, me, let me know if I'm speaking wrong here because we've all had this, had, had this discussion. Now, I'm not, I thought the three one, I, I kind of, when I first saw it, I went, huh, that's interesting. So I wasn't like, oh my God, no. But then other people were like, oh my God, no. Uh, so it's, it, which, which you, you, you're, you're gonna get. I mean, that's just, that, 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 we, we expect that. Um, but I think the overall consensus was we really liked the first option better. We thought admin on the first floor, you have a greeter there. You don't have someone come in and talk to a box or talk, right? It's very impersonal. Not, not that it's not the way it's done now, but I really like the idea of having an admin there saying, hey, how you doing? How's, how's your day going? So it's workflow. It's, it's the site and the workflow for your staff and visitors or whatever. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. A response time for scheme 2A better than 3? Yeah, that, you know, Tom, that, that's a great question. And, and other than the fact that you have to come one down one pole to go to the other pole, I don't think that there's going to be, if anything, it's, it's, it's seconds. Uh, uh, you know, um, having the second pole on the far side, now the guys are going to have to decide which pole they're going to go to, right? And, and at 3 o'clock in the morning, they're going to be, do I want to go that way? Or, or which truck am I on today? Am I on that one or am I on this one? So I don't think it would be a, a huge benefit either way for response time. Um, flow from the upstairs to the downstairs. I mean, I can tell you some of the things the guys liked about about that is the big separation with admins over here and living quarters are over here. That's a big separation, right? We're never going to see each other. Whereas with 2A, operations and admin are on the same floor. So that was some, well, we have to see you. Yes, every now and then you do. I'm sorry. From a cheese point of view, I like to see my guys. I like to talk to them. I like to see them, you know, it's easier if I need to talk to the captain, I can stick my head out the door and say, hey, come here when he's down the hall, as opposed to having to call him or try and find him wherever he happens to be. So, um, so Chief, access and collaboration are important to the workflow. Oh, very much so. Co uh, collaboration especially. Um, we, we have meetings every morning. We have, you know, we, we had that communication. I get a, uh, the admin gets a phone call of a possible, because not all calls come in 911. People will pick up the phone and call the fire station direct. Oh, my alarms are going off. Is there smoke in your building? Yeah, there is. Well, okay, why are you calling this instead of 911? But right? your ease to get to the captain or the assistant chief is yeah. right there. Yeah. As opposed to I got to walk across the building and, and, and whatever. Deb, do you have anything to add? You're just sitting there staring at me. <laughs> Go up closer. No, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the flow is, is better. And I think the interpersonal interactions is much better because that's something we lose nowadays. And Especially if it's that far apart, you know, it's most of the time a lot of firefighters don't want to see their chief anyway. But it's good when they kind of have the same, you know. So on the intermediary, um, he's the vice principal. Yeah, but yeah, I will say though from the elevation, you know, like I kind of I like how the third floor looks, but obviously operations is going to trump looks in the third floor. Yeah, the the elevations are like, huh? That's kind of neat. Is there is there a way with 2A to put the tower, and I don't know if I'm just throwing stuff out, is there a way to split those three bays? Would that help? So we have three on one side of the tower and three on the other, and I don't know if the that's The tower in between? Uh, you know, I, I don't know if, if that helps in, 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 in either scheme. I don't know. Cap, what do you think? Well, I like the, the two. Um, 2A? The 2A for sure. And then uh, Putting the three doors and the three doors Probably together. Probably like a double arch yeah. instead of the arch over yeah. each door. Yeah. Okay. And I'm, I'm agreeing with 2A. Um, the three kind of scares me as far as cross contamination. Mm. You know, your living quarters being above, and I know it'll be designed so there shouldn't be any, but as things get older, I would worry about that. And as firefighters get lazy and don't hook up the flammable vents and back them in, it, it happens. How about, it does. How about the costs? 2A to 3. We don't really know Obviously the cost yet. The is, square footage is 3 is more bigger. building? More building, yeah. I'm talking like more mass. A little, more mass. More a little bit more square yeah. footage, but the, the foundations are less, the roof is a little less, you know, you don't know how that yeah. kind of works together. You have another stair, which you have another yeah. stair, so you have another elevator stop. I mean, you know, it's. I mean, I, my sense is that the differential is one that is not huge and is something that you could find in the way that you detail the tower. I mean, so I wouldn't. Okay. 
you know. I think I think we thought there. I think Mark and I and Amy thought that there would be yeah. more more sight to gain. Yeah. I mean, we picked up. I mean, I don't know, 14, 15 feet of the site, and it yeah. did did allow us to pull that away. But it didn't allow us to do say it on a tray of parking, which yeah. is what we were right. hoping for. I mean, maybe the engineers can figure it out, but Mark spent a bit of time trying to make sure that we couldn't get it. And that was a, a bit of a disappointing. We started out tighter, but then we, we, we could get the program to work. You know, the program didn't work well enough. So, you know, so I think that for Mark, that was the exploration. And in the end, you know, that's what it ended up being. And, and we thought, no, is that enough? Yeah. We wondered the same thing. So, um, but at a certain point, it feels like you have the tail wagging the dog and the site yeah. is becoming that is the reason right. we did it. Yeah. No, I mean, we right. originally it's thought that's the only way. Yeah, yeah. But I, I, like, when you get into the fact that it's maybe not as as good operationally. Yeah. I don't know. So by agreement, we'll see. I, I, by, but, but, yeah, I, I like if if I'm two A would be my preference. By agreement. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're perfectly fine without you know. Bigger tower. <laughs> yeah, the maybe. Bigger that building. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you can see the tower has very different feel for the building when it's on one side versus the other. Yeah. That's mm -hmm. a big difference. Yeah. In the middle, sure. Could you go back to the two-way site plan? Just because I want to mention something, because if I don't, my DPW director is going to beat me. Mm. And I had mentioned it to you guys again, yes. but I, I just, I, this area, this area, this area, you want it as gore area as opposed to a island. Does that make sense to you guys? In other words, you want to be able to have, be able to plow through here. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Whereas if it's if the gore area is a normal strip structure. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I, th I think that's what he was looking for. We hear that all the time from DBW yeah. directors. Yeah, so I, always. I, I would make sure, and then he wanted to know <laughs> if there was a way to take this, the generator, yeah. move it back, so this was a snow storage yeah. area. Yeah. Well, we're going to have to balance Mark for mine. So, go ahead. So yeah. the, the question I have, though, the, I believe the zoning has a requirement for every 10 spaces to have a tree. Have a tree. Is that correct? Is that possible? Is, is, that, is that going to... Anybody remember that yes. one? Yes. Yeah. There are tree requirements. So Between is, parties. Is it, is, it, is it you plant a tree every 10 spaces, or you, you provide a tree every 10 not, spaces? It's not decided. Okay. okay. The town planner wants to see every 20 feet, but the bylaw doesn't say that. So you have to negotiate. Okay. Okay. So okay. You got a lot of trees on site. That okay. is one thing we did hear last okay. time that the safety yeah. for the fire um, staff and the people using you know the public was paramount because we talked about street trees and things like that at the meeting as well and said the street trees would be impediments to the sight lines. Yeah. And so I think the board suggested they were open and I you know I agree with I agree with those. Um, so so, so the, the gore the gore area I mean if. if Yes, it, 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 it is a, um, an ask. It's so a waiver. It's a waiver. It's right. Get a waiver for placement of the trees because you don't want to have to put a tree every 20 feet in front of your apparatus base. Oh, no, it can't. Yeah, right. yeah. It doesn't make sense. Okay. Um, and then yeah. that wouldn't work. And there was one in the front, and that was to separate the parking from the apparatus, the drive through, right that one right there. Yeah, yeah. So the, the, the um, DPW wants to be able to plow over that. They want to be able to plow through that area. I said, I will make sure that I mention it again. That's John? Your rear facing um, apparatus base, mm -hmm. you would exit to the left and. and yes. <coughs> yeah, there's. Off the Main Street, and would you return the same way? Yes, yeah, so there's, there's, there's plenty of room to swing that out right. there. But they wouldn't go the, to the right. No, 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 because this is parking and this is slightly raised, if I'm correct, right, guys? Correct. It, it may be, Maybe. yeah, we've got to work through and the ground. Yeah. 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 yeah, because yeah. we don't want them yeah. driving to no, here. No, no. These guys are used to driving in when there's fire trucks coming out. We do it now. They, they're used to being aware of that. Whereas if we're coming out here and there's a, a citizens coming in and looking at fire trucks, that's not a good combination. No, gotcha. Thanks. Okay. So by agreement, we'd like to pursue 2A. And anything else we need to know? So are we? are we requesting that they just continue to study the elevations with just way. that option. I think so. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's great. Gives them that more of a direction. I mean, that's great. <laughs> <laughs> that was what? I said it was great. I mean, we were worried tonight we would 
have a, like a split. Like more options to manage. Yeah. yeah. Well, not well, more three options. like this and three like that. No, no, no exactly. Well. Which you know is fine, but you know it's sort of like you know it's good that it, there's consensus for good reasons, and that's really helpful. You know, you're not sitting and saying we should do it for other reasons, and right. I think you know it's great. Okay. I love where you carry the art over to here. Mm. You know what I mean? I thought I thought that was it just I don't know. I thought I thought it made it more it was more pleasing to my eye, but yep. what do I know? I mean I, You mean the line that comes off the spring? No, the actual arch. They actually put an arch oh, over the entrance. Had an arch. Oh. And, and, and one of the there was earlier. one that had an arch. This is for the, uh, that yeah, one. Mm -hmm. that one. Mm -hmm. Okay. And now I've also seen not so like this has an arch element, but it's not an arch. Is that it, it is an actual arch. It just um, right in elevation you see the back of. Okay, because I've seen look some stations that it it looks like an arch, but it's straight across. Does that make sense? Because it, it looks like it's an arch, but it's not an arch. It just has an element to make it look like that. It's a facade. It's not brick. It's a, yeah. It's, it's in so so you so you don't run into the oh my god we have to worry about carrying it, but you still get that same look mm -hmm. right, right. with that arch. Well, none of these are really arches. In the truest sense of the word, as Amy was describing, none of them are arches. They're all um, these are gonna, not going to be. Should be no. supported by. Is it an arch? No. Go oh, far, chief. <laughs> well, maybe we should look at Richardsonian arches. Like that would really be. Well, Mark was actually looking at much real arches, and, and they look pretty terrible. He said these look awful. Yeah. Yeah. Circles. Yeah. Well, I was just like thinking about you know on the Ritzy. Richardson buildings, you just oh. have that one really beautiful oh, single yeah. arch. Yes. 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 And then everything else, huge. and then other areas are, as you said, Linear. based on their function. Yeah. And, and yeah. Pl please understand, I don't, I'm not, a dis I'm not an architect in any way. I have no idea. I, mean, I can tell you how to put a fire out. I can tell you architecturally how I'm putting, you know, what I'm worried. But I, I, we're going to rely a lot, obviously, on, 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 you, on this team to say, this doesn't look good, or this does look good. Um, can I ask you a question? You were talking about the three elements, the apparatus, the tower, and the administration pieces um, is distinct. And that's what you were referring to in these, this thing right here. OK, because I just wanted to make sure which three elements you were actually talking. Because actually, you know, the, the piece that's between the tower and the pitch roof are also part of the operations. The tower is sort of in the middle of it. It's sort of on the edge of it, just to remind everybody that there is a slight difference between that, at least on the first floor, it's big time, you know. So you look at it in plan, you look at it in elevation, you're looking at sort of two different things. There's and a clock that makes the impact track. <laughs> <laughs> it's been smiling all night. No, the inside is function. That's yes, it is functional. That's the important That's the part. important thing. Yeah. Chief, the clock's got only one arm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, well, without question, function, and I, and I did, again, backing up a little bit to, to, thir to last week, they understood the importance of the function. In the operations, I think that was real. I was really happy to hear that they understood how critical that was to us and how important that is to the operation. Okay. All right. Future meeting dates discussion. So going back just to the first one, nope. by the way, okay. the flat out, you know, no arches. You know, we. Do you have to keep that one a little bit longer? Oh yeah. <laughs> I was just going to say we would like to keep that a little bit longer, but, I, but you know. Um, you know, and then there there were two of those, and you know, yeah, one was more vertical, um, and one was a little bit more horizontal. You know, more punched. Function wise, I have no problem with it, but I think what you're going to run into is we're going to run yeah. into opposition from these the people. The, the city. They they are really focused on this being a critical component to the downtown revitalization. It's on the edge. It's the first building going in, so they're really concerned. So, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking, and you guys may know better, that you're going to get pushback on that. I agree. I think there probably is pushback, but I'm still struggling with the rationale behind why that's not considered traditional New England architecture. Because, I mean, Don't have, yeah. I, could, I can name, I, guess, you know, I know. I like that one a lot, but. What's, what's the line about, uh, I don't know anything about art, but I know pornography when I see it. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know anything about classic New England architecture, but I know, I'll know it when I see it. Right? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> well, that was the one interesting comment that they weren't really sure how to define, the committees weren't re ready to define that either for yeah. us. They could just say they liked the brick, yeah. Yeah. or they liked some of the forms, or they liked arches. No, I think you do have quite a few arches in town, actually, in the end. When you look at all your buildings in total, I went through the thing um, just 
yesterday again, and I thought, there, there, there's there's there a chance. way on this building <laughs> yes. to incorporate? So if you look at the old old fire station, it's got that kind of front that comes up and has the little, you know, arch and little stone in the middle. Something like that on either side to not so much get just to. Instead of having a flat, you're seeing something uh, up on the top. You're yeah, saying? you know, up so on the parapet. Yes, uh, up on the parapet. Right, like a parapet on both sides. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm just throwing it out there, trying to think something that's going to make everyone happy. At least on the apparatus bay side, like the old one. Yeah, the old old one. The old old one on Church Street. Like the arches with the white. Yeah. Right take away the colors. It depends, black and white. <laughs> we actually tried to take. So there's a there's a clock there that has the year of the station, right? And I sent the guy saying, Captain Brewhart, I was like, I want that, I want it before they tear it down. He says, that ain't coming out, so I guess. <laughs> I said, okay, because I thought that would be something neat to have. Well, I, I was thinking of going back to the Richardson Arch. Oh my God, you got it. Okay, I gotta, now I'm gonna have to look that up, you know that. They, but, it, but to your point, there are beautiful Richardsonian arches all over New England. Yes. And they, they pretty much always signal the entrance to the building. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Which to me is a good solution here because you're creating so much complexity, so we go back to it being fussy, by trying to incorporate them into the apparatus bay area. Like that's your functional area, right? But it's also just a nice entrance. Like it just feels and welcoming. Yeah. You know? Anyway. Well, One area uh, Mark had yeah. uh, uh, an earlier scheme. Yeah, the, early, the early ones, the, the arc was just over the entrance. Yeah, the, oh, it's just over the entrance. And Until we went to the meeting last the week. <laughs> administrative residential group all the way over to the tower. Then you've got the three components yeah. anchored with this inviting arched entry. Maybe that's a possibility. Okay. Well, right, right now, the second floor over the top of the, uh, to the left of the entrance is, is pitch mm -hmm. back. Mr. Arab. So this so is there a step through, right? Yeah. No, you need uh, the red line. Oh, yeah. <laughs> right this, so this area is a uh, step back. But, that, but looking at the plan, that's sort of the Richardsonian thing because there's mm -hmm. the arch and then it's set back. I, I mean, I'm yeah. getting too literal, but there's an opportunity. Which do you want? She first do you want got to an arch. Yes. <laughs> Richardson, is that what you're talking you about? Want to go back to the oh, she went, I didn't know what she could hear. That's, in, um, that's Richardson in Romanesque, which. Yes, but that's in Everett. I don't know, I just saw the picture with A lot of those buildings have, like, yes. you're talking about the libraries have, because they're small in scale, but they have, like, a more gentle arch, typically, that's over yeah. an entrance. And it's, it's it creates sort of like an entrance portal, because then the, the door itself is set back in there. Hmm. Anyway. That might be a way to incorporate an arch. And then keep it, everything else functional. Exactly. Yeah, that one. Okay. That's a, well, that's a Syrian arch. That's the other thing. When they get, you can get into all these different layers. You no, know, it's a Richardsonian arch, but he chose different architectural precedents, like every way. The libraries are very distinctive. You can drive by any yeah. Richardsonian library and say, I know who did that. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, now I'm going to be looking for that when I'm out yeah. driving around going, hey, yeah. I'm going to impress people. Yeah. Yeah, that's a Richardsonian. Your wife's going to be really impressed. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, I grew up in Pennsylvania. There are as massive Richardsonian buildings. That's true. Yeah. And Princeton, Stowe, Acton, Sudbury, all have libraries inspired by the Richardson. There are over 50 of them in Massachusetts alone. Yeah. Yeah. Every. Chief, I'm going to drop my H.A. Richardson book off. The I know. I was going to say, I'll bring mine out the next time. Oh, you <laughs> threw it. My college advisor wrote it. Cool. Give them the I am pay one also. Wonderful. I do have those too. Okay. <coughs> so, do you have any other questions from us for us? In, in terms of elevation, so we, we're still, we, everything's still open in terms for option two A. Is that correct? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, if you were looking at, <laughs> if you had to be okay. forced in Diana into an arch, had, do you have any opinion on any of them? Of the ones that you showed? Yeah. Um, Just not curious. that one. No, not that one. Definitely not that oh, one. Thank you. I love that one. No, I'm kidding. I think, yeah. Then without the windows. Without, without the, the windows. windows. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we were talking about that day. <laughs> and then the next one is just too flat. Too flat. To me. 
So I, I mean, yeah, we Mark had taller ones, but then there was no material above the arch, and I thought that was terribly out of proportion because it got so close to the parapet that this it then is Robert Ventura's take on plastic. <laughs> it's, it's Wellesley, you know, yeah. I, I like the Clara story. I think I would like them better without the Clara story. At some yeah. point. I like the idea. So you can spot the roof monitors up on this one. Mm, yes. I assume that's what they are. Yeah. Really? Yes. I, I'm going to tell you, I really like the idea of the monitors as a platform for PV. Yeah. I think it's a great thing. Plus, it brings in natural light to that apparatus bay. And I can tell you, that's that's so nice to have when you're out there working to have instead of having the glaring. You it's know, northern like, light. So when you're sketching and painting, <laughs> you're going to get a lot of coloration. I know. You know, I have firefighters that would buy that. Yeah, yeah that's a good idea. So now that, now that we've um, kind of got into a flat roof area, how does that impact the mechanical? Can we move some of that out onto the roof and save some space in front? Um, we're still going to need space in the building. I think there, you know, we were always assuming there would be yeah, some exterior mechanical. It became smaller. No, unfortunately, no. I don't think so. Okay. Careful. Anything else? Let's talk a little bit about schedule, and then we can come back. I mean, so you know, Mark had a, had a great question. You know, where are we? But um, so I just wanted to um, I wanted to talk to you a bit about the schedule, and I don't know if you can agree this, but we haven't changed the overall schedule of the completion no. dates at this point, and there's no need to. I mean, I don't think we're that on track. But this is the schedule where we are now. This is we're in schematic design, and um, what we have left, we're going to um, actually. Um, I, I want to ask Mark to, to contact Clark tomorrow about setting up the geotechnical test pits. I think we can start that. I think we have a, a we have a scheme now. For the most part, we have a location close enough. Let's get the program started. We will also want to arrange for the DPW perhaps to do some test pits along the way, so that you know we need borings and test pits. We just don't need one or the other. So um, we'll get that going. We have two committee meetings remaining at SD in 2024. Um, the lead to the cost estimate. We have one design review meeting and one community information meeting. Now, last time we were here, there was a lot of conversation about when those should happen. Oh, um, and so they are currently, and I'm going to hold on, I get my own schedule out here, but I can read a little bit more. Um, we had um, a meeting on January 10th for the community, mm -hmm. and we had. Um, um, the design review meeting, we called it meeting number two because we were just going in order and the documents had to go to the planner on the first, uh, the 11th January. of yeah. January and that was scheduled for January 18th, which is a Thursday morning. And then we had another committee meeting on January 24th, which would you would be signing off for us to proceed to the cost estimate. So that was the schedule and that is the critical things that we need to discuss tonight and how it affects the work that Mark and a Amy and I are going to do over the next couple weeks. Um, do do we feel, I mean, I think feel we have a plan and we could have a plan presented and a, and a site plan and a thing, but it's the elevations that still need work and, and we've all agreed. That we, you know, we spent a lot of time developing the third, the other scheme. I think we had to do it. I think it was uh, important mm -hmm. to do it. Spent time doing that. We had the design review meeting. So the question to us is do we want to shift those meetings around the community meeting and, and that so that we can get um, a meeting and push the design review a week or something, just a week. We don't want to we don't want to push it too far because it throws the whole schedule off to the end of time. You mean once a month? If they have anything to review, yeah. but uh, there's not much going on in design review right now. So it's so if we decide to push it out a week, that wouldn't be it shouldn't be a problem. They've been meeting on Wednesday morning. It's Thursday, Thursday morning. Is Thursday it th morning? I think it's Thursday morning. Thursday morning. Yeah. I can talk to Lori okay. about that. Yeah, that's we, not a problem. We sure sort of talked a little bit about when they were, and I know they're kind of scheduled, but you know, it sounded like maybe you know this is a really important project. Maybe that they'd be flexible about that, but we'll I'll, we'll have to make that call to her. But I, my guess, the bigger question is, we need another meeting with you yeah. uh, before we submit that. The, the, and and mm -hmm. you know, I think. We're not in disagreement with that, <laughs> but we wanted to make sure that you're not concerned. And then we would have a community meeting. At that point, we would have a plan. We'd have a site plan. We can have our engineers moving on this plan to develop um, the work for it and the, the landscaper, the landscape architect and folks like that. And then we'll be working 
to you know fine tune the plan as much as possible. There's right now there's a few things that we know we want to move and then work on 3D stuff. And then we'll be doing Mark Wall Street. We have schematic design to do. That's a whole level of package of information that has to be put together. Um, but the one big thing here that um, GGD, our mechanical engineers, you know, when um, Dom was in, he talked about the time he needs uh, he needs the elevations approved before they can do the life cycle costing. So we need to get that answer as early in January as possible, a direction. It doesn't mean it can't move a little bit, but we need to get that to him early on in order to get the life cycle cost even. So I think that's the one thing that we didn't talk enough about last time, but it is um, in the mix here. It, it was in this mix, it's just not written down, but now that will be affected. But you know, I'm hearing we need another meeting. I think you're all, you're all in agreement with that. And, um, um, so, what do you think? Yeah, about there's, shifting there's shift to community meeting number four. Um, the, the committee meeting number, um, or the community information session number two? Number two? five, community, committee meeting number five, January 10th, design review 18th, and community information the 24th. Did that work? Okay, say that, say that one more time. That's exactly what I just wrote down, except I had a 20, yeah. So, so what, he, what he's saying is, is take the, and I'm just going to stand up here because yeah. it's easier for me. Take this meeting here, which is our next meeting we have mm -hmm. scheduled, and move that up to where the community information session is. Right. Okay? Take, and so, at, and then take that one and move it to the uh, eight, the 17th or the 18th? 24th. No, no. The 24th would have been the uh, design review. Right? Just flip it. Well, we're going to have to move the design review meeting number two out a week at least because you can right. see the next one says documents to the planner right. on 111. So we can't have a meeting with you on the 10th and then it's been on the 11th. Right. So the input would go out to here and then this would go out to here. We're just dropping them all down. I'm just trying to get it right. Or not dropping them all down. So we're I'm sorry. You're taking this meeting and moving it up to the 10th. Yep. You go with that, right? Yep. And the next meeting we would have to have would be community information. I mean, community input, right? Right. Which we could do on what the 18th. Okay. Does that make sense? Or the 17th actually would probably be better because that's a Wednesday, right? Yeah. So the 17th. I'll just write up. I'll just write it up here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's the 17th, right? And then we take the design review and push it out a week. Yeah, we'll we'll just adjust it, and I'll talk to Lori. Um, that would be the 25th. Yeah. Design review? Would be the 25th. <laughs> that's a Thursday. That's what I Make sure that works. Does she publicize it as a public meeting? Is that why she needs it ahead of time? Uh, ahead of time? Yeah, I think because of the review package, you have to get to them. Okay. Um, they need a, I think they need a week of review. Design okay. review requires us now to submit and requires any drawings a week before their meeting so they yeah. can see them, review them, instead of getting them the day of the meeting. They want to film a week before. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, but they don't usually review them. I'm just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so that's it. Question, question, to yes, question to the committee, Madam Chair. Oh, yeah. When are we going to be collectively comfortable with a a yeah. massing mm -hmm. diagram to show to people beyond this room? I think by when will it be by ready? The 10th, the 24th. I mean. I mean, with the 24th, what will be? Or the 17th is one day. If we do community input on the 17th, we need to be comfortable with that massing, That's which point. is why we have the fire station building committee on the 10th to finish off that, right? Right. Am, am I following? Right, yeah. Am I picking yeah. up what you're putting down? Is it saying we'll that? That right. my point, Chief. Thank you. The, the other thing is, are we adding a meeting, uh, uh, another meeting, since we're adding this or moving these meetings around, do, we would still want a meeting for you guys to sign off on SD. Right. That would have to be after. We have to add another meeting in in this thing before we sign off. That would be where committee meeting six is, right? Well, February twenty first. I don't think we want to wait oh, that, that long. Oh, yeah. 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 No, yeah. we gotta. So I gotta look at these, but I, I think we we'd, yeah. we'd want a committee meeting with you after design review. I would assume. Right. So the end of first the month. week in February. Last week right. in. Thirty first. <laughs> well, we won't, we won't <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, I no, but it would be I before, before the cost estimate. estimate. So, so we would get sure. feedback from design review. We'd make whatever tweaks we'd need to do, and then we'd meet with you so that you say, yes, this is what we want to have it cost.
Cost estimated. Yeah, I mean, I, you know, I, like, you know, some, some committees actually formally vote for it. She I don't know. To that, that yeah, hurts. just so that everybody's clear what's going to be, and you know, so. So, I yeah, I mean, I think I if we meet with design review on the 25th, that's a Thursday. The following Wednesday is January 31st. Yeah. So meet with you on the 31st. Sure. And design review, the whole, the whole committee doesn't need to be there for design review. I, you know, I'll make sure I'm there. And I can, the chair can be there. Four people, Chief, Tom, right? Design review is, is There's two. Three. We're supposed to be three, but there's only two in there now. Yeah, Dave Barron, the landscape architect. Oh, I'm sorry, there's three in there now. There are three. Yeah. Shows up. Okay. So you have Amy and Lisa. Okay. Okay, so let me go through this. January 10th is now becoming um, the committee meeting mm -hmm. number five. And, um, and then on the 17th. 17th is now going to be the... Um, Community information, mm -hmm. session number two, and then then the design review is the 25th, which means we need to get our drawings to the design review committee on the 18th, the week earlier, and then then we have committee meeting number six on January 31st. And nothing on everybody the good with that. Yeah. Does that make sense, to everybody? Mm -hmm. yeah. I think one of the things about the design review at that point. I think um, this is a different type of project than they typically are reviewing, and I think there's a discussion to be had about exactly what schematic design is. That it's not the final design, <coughs> but there are certain decisions that you know need to stay in place in order to meet the schedule and the budget and all of that. But mm -hmm. I did I did bring that up a little bit about the schedule. About um, I don't know if you remember it. Sort of at that time when there was talked a lot about the committees hadn't met yet. The kind of I said you know we're we're in formally in the phase is called schematic design and it has an end period and then we moved to a thing called design development. And then I said at the end of design development there are no more changes. I said that. I don't we know if anybody clear. heard yeah, that. I did hear that. Okay. And and I said because the next part is all technical and there's no changes, period. But at the same time, I guess my point is also though that yeah, the they don't understand. Case, there's still a little flexibility, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. So I don't think they understood, but I, I get your point. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. And then I'll adjust the rest of the schedule. So it's a little bit like changing deck chairs. But. The 31st. Okay, 17, 25, so we should put 31. about a week probably in the end, you yeah. know, only in the end probably. A week or so. Yeah. yeah. Now is, Which isn't bad. Is in person, I prefer in person meetings. Is that okay with, with, with you guys or is that, I mean. I, I like in person if we can, I mean, I think we get a lot more. Uh, well, it's much easier. Do, but we can do whatever it makes sense. I, I, I know that we really don't She have loves travel. Zoom meetings. <laughs> right, Don? You love them. Okay. No, so if, if we can just maintain these as in-persons. I don't know yeah, about right design now. review, design review. I mean, right now, I yeah. think they, we benefit from them. Maybe later, you know, when yeah. it's more technical or something, we don't have to, so we can play by ear, but we're good with these. Okay. There's a snowstorm, we can always go to Zoom, I right. guess, you know. Plan B. Yeah. Well, no, we can't, because oh. there's a requirement for public meetings oh. to be posted 48 hours in advance, so we'd have to know 48 hours in advance if we were changing well, it. If, we, if there's a prediction for a blizzard, yeah. we can make a decision about, then. And we can yeah, still maintain. She'd get mad at me because I make her keep changing stuff. So that's my thing. <laughs> and I think actually in person, I think the flow goes better, the input goes better, and everything goes so much faster. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's not as fragmented. Yeah. So so I prefer in person if we can do it. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Fine. No problem right. with that. Um, I don't know what else I had here. I did have the rest of the schedule. We still have all these other planning boards, zoning board, community information, master plan. We have all the – now, we did have that – Master Plan Revitalization one meeting scheduled for here. We have, they were at the other meeting. I will reach out. I don't know if they need another meeting. I, I will check with them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so okay, we'll anyhow, the these, this, and I'll adjust these dates, but this is still the, the thing. And then, of course, um, bidding for CA is here. Um, next step is, you know, I'll, we've talked about that step, you know, sort of thing. So, um, okay. Okay. Did anyone go, want to go back to design updates at all? Or was that was you guys said you thought you wanted to go back or not? Oh, uh, yeah. we can go back. I, you know, I, I no, th anything you want to look at. I just wanted to get. I just want to talk about the schedule because I think it affected conversations about the elevations. Like, how you know, are we going to submit something? Are we not? You know, what will we submit to them if um, 
if you know we wanted to stay on that schedule because we wouldn't have another meeting with you. I think yeah. this is. The, I think I, I, the, the schedule has to be flexible for all of us. I don't think. I think it is. I always call it a live-in document. Yeah, that's yeah. not an issue at all. At least for him, I, I hope. I don't mean to be speaking for the rest of the committee, but. Okay. Okay. Is there anything anybody wanted to go back to, or everybody's okay with? Um, I think it would be guys. Um, what do you want to talk about? You know, any anything else? Um, quickly, short. We could talk as long as short about anything you want. Could go you back. introduce some other colors like forest green in your fenestration? It's <laughs> a very New England look. There it's is. Black. Yeah. It, it, there is. It is forest green. It almost looks like there, it is. Um, it's, 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 it's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. It's hard to tell. That one has green. green. Forest green. Green. That has green. Uh, yeah. I like. I like the forest green. green too. That one. But it's just hard to tell. Well, the difference. It's the light. Give you yeah. different colors okay. on the screen. Yeah, there's the definitely brown. green in this one. So is that metal panel on the upper? Level? Yeah. Right now that is. Okay. And and the um, the columns between the bays is that also is the green metal panel there? Can you hear? I think it's a material change. We haven't right. really, right. Right. yeah. Whether it's metal, whether it's, you know, another Sleep. panel product. Another panel or, product. Yeah. I mean, with the new energy code, I mean, the new energy code is going to yeah. throw a bunch of wrenches into the, these piers are hard enough to build, and then we're just trying to wrap them with the insulation and get the, the plane of the insulation and the door to line up, and it's not been easy, you know. Okay. Do our, it's maybe a top question, do our, Design review and planning board members understand these forthcoming changes on, on, on energy energy uh, efficiency. Okay. None of them are from building design legal. Okay. All right. Not Part of my thinking is 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 set the expectation, manage the expectation that right. this is coming down the pipe, and we can't just you know go to Home Depot and slap a couple of doors in there. It's not even. It's here. It's not even down the pike. It's well, here. I mean, it must be affecting your all of our work. Yeah. Yeah. I I can tell you the 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 building official has in numerous meetings with both boards brought it up and said, hey, you know, we have this. We you know for different doing different things. I've heard him mention it because unfortunately I have nothing else to do with my life, so I watched the meetings, and I, I so I, I have heard him him, him him mention it several times. So they should they at least know it's there. But we'll have this permitted before the tenth is approved, right? The tenth petition. Because that just came up for comment. Yeah, that did come up. Yeah. And I, you know, I think it's it's already here. I mean it's well, for the energy. For the energy I I don't know. You know, we won't be permitting this until the end of the year. Well, the big change would be if Northboro opts in for the enhanced energy enhanced, enhanced stretch code. Is there talk about that? No. We are now a stretch code community, but we haven't opted in for the north. Yeah, and and I think yeah. there are only, weren't there only 10 towns that were in that enhanced? It's very few, yeah. Yeah, and you had to be picked. I mean, there were a group, there was a group, certain group of expectations, and then there were a bunch of people applied and people were rejected, uh, you know, because we're only like two spots left in that case. I think the city of Boston was, no, it was, it was rejected, it was yes. Rejected. Uh, they didn't yeah. actually even apply, and people were upset about that. Yeah. Like Cambridge is in it, Lexington is a, you know, a certain group. Well, Cambridge is already net zero, so they were already enhanced before enhancement yeah. came out. So, um, but anyhow, I mean, it's complicated with the new codes, and we haven't even. I mean, Amy's attended the most <laughs> of the meetings, you know, and sort of like triple glazed windows, yeah, less windows, learning. less openings. Uh, for the building learning. officials as well. So yeah. they don't know how to enforce it or apply it yet. So even if they were planning to adopt it, it, it would take them a while to be able to you know, bring it into their system. Yeah. I know that I know that GGD is concerned. Uh, they had um, the testing, uh, the, 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 the benchmarks you enter into that they're, they're failing, buildings are failing. Um, the, um, the Teddy, the Teddy, um, the new, um, the new Metric. system you, you know, you, you test your systems on. Everybody's failing Teddy. Mm -hmm. No one's passing Teddy, and that's the state's preferred mm -hmm. um, one. So everybody's using the passive house. Passive house to try to, to get through. To, to get through. So they were. So GGD. We didn't hear what happened. I know, know one of their engineers is going to sort of a meeting with um, the um, Department of Energy to talk about. Their experiences with it and how it wasn't working. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if no one passes down. I'm happy with the Department of Energy because they didn't go through DVRS 
or even the form of imitation. So you have many of these building officials very confused. Yeah, I think so there's a lot of confusion. I mean, the, you know, they promulgated it and it became a requirement and yet the code wasn't finalized. You know, it was just a draft book that was out there and it's been difficult for everyone. I, I know we're going to have problems. I mean, a problem is again something it's that we're challenge. All, it's a <laughs> challenge in the middle of the project, you know, that we have to meet. And you know, I know that Dom he spoke about it when he talked, you know, about uh, the testing. So, but that's it's good that they're kind of ahead of this. Like they, yeah. Yeah. they've been experiencing it on they've other been, jobs. But that that's what you know what Janet was saying earlier is until we have a plan and elevations, they can't even start the process to sort of know where we stand on it. Yeah. And and so they're getting. I don't want to say nervous. They're, they're contacting us constantly saying, how are things going? How are things going? <laughs> yeah, we hear from them on a daily basis. Yep. So, you know, it, it won't allow massive amounts of delays. And not that there would necessarily be in a building like this anyhow, um, but, you know, it, it could change things. So we, we just have to, you know, figure it out with everybody else um, and figure out how to pass it. Because if it doesn't pass, it doesn't pass. <laughs> it's got to pass something. Or, have you guys had projects where you're trying to pass Teddy or any of that yet? Have you had any we, we have. We actually passed. Mm -hmm. You passed yeah. something. Yeah, yeah, that's good. Uh, and it was a library project, so okay. um, um, I'm not sure. It was just, it was just a, a, a evolution. They just kept on trying different things to <laughs> figure out what they needed to do to get the numbers where they needed yeah. to be. Um, yeah. And it did pass, but um, it took a long time. You guys, have you? W most of our work is either in construction or in really early design. Okay, so you're so we okay. we're watching. We're watching. <laughs> yeah. Watching now. Okay. So anyhow, that's just another thing we're you know we're gonna be working on. You know. Along so. along with this discussion <coughs> related, so when we looked at the schedule, yeah. we sort of making things run on the schedule. Um, the schematic design cost estimate is dated for the 24th of January, but that. You were saying that's going to be after we approve schematic. Yeah. Yes. So we're going to have to adjust the date. So we're, we're going to push out like a week. So a week. Um, it's really just going to mess you up later. Well, I think we need to look. Yeah. It was whether it will mess us up later, whether we can recoup that week somewhere, or whether it's going to push the whole schedule. I'll, I'll look at the whole thing. You know, when I come back from vacation, I'm going on vacation. But um, but Jerry has about three weeks in there. You know, that's the January 24th to February 14th. So we'll talk to him as well. Um, you know, he, 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 <coughs> he does his work and then he gets it back. We review it. He takes it back. All the engineers review it. So there's, you know, we don't want to cut that short, but maybe we end up having to squeeze a little bit more later on. I had if a we, little bit of time. we even have yeah. there, I mean, if he's got it for three weeks, then we've got another week between to, yeah, getting that the and the committee. committee so meeting. we might have a little bit of room in there to squeeze. And I think, I think um, CDs issued for bid technically on the 20th, and then we had to the 20, um, uh, September 20th to October 25th in there. Um, so, and then the meeting in the fall time meeting is, I don't know what the- We had looked at October, October, November, because we wanted, it has to be in October because we're, make, met, we're using the November election. Okay. For the right. ballot, so we have to have that in fact, it may even need to be a little bit earlier. It may need to be September. So okay, yeah. so we'll have to look at all of that. Okay. Chief, have you heard from Mitch? He was going to talk to Andy about some of the logistics and the mechanics of, of this in terms of the legal aspects of special meeting and and then getting stuff on the ballot in November. Right. Well, so getting on the ballot in November, I, I spoke with Andy. And he says that's completely doable. We just have to have the town meeting. I mean, the special town meeting far enough in advance, right. which I think is. 30 days, but I'm not positive. I'd have to look that up. So that's why I'll, I'll find out okay. for You could do that. I can tighten this up a little yep, bit. I'll, I'll get, yeah. you, okay. get you some more. Okay. Okay. Any other business that legally can come before the committee? And um, it came to our attention, some of us, that there's been a misunderstanding on the site selection and how we came about getting it and if it could be changed. So I'd like the chief to address that a little. I'd be happy to. So back uh, during the feasibility uh, study in 2018, June of, June of 2018, the, the committee put out an RFI uh, for anyone who within a certain area, and 
here's the map. You can't, you can't, I know it's a little, little tough for you guys to see, but you can type it over there if they'd like to see that. Uh, that, that says, um, okay, if you have, if, if you're within this area, if you have 2.5 acres of developable land, if you have 400 feet of frontage and of a public way, rights of, uh, right of way, easements, restrictions, access to public utility. And if you want to sell your land to the town to buy this, to build a station, please submit under the RFI. Um, can, can you just go put the cover on that? Yeah. And uh, we, we, uh, we did that. We, re we, we received um, six, six proposals. We received nine Church Street and 10 Church Street, which are on opposite sides of the road. Now, 10 Ch Church Street would have been in combination where the current fire station is, so it would be expanding and using that same area. We also re received seven Pierce, which is where the um, laundromat was, or where it still is, I should say. Uh, we also received, um, I'm trying to remember, I'm get them all, 20 Gale Street, and we received 61, 65, West Main, which is where this is. And I think there was one more, and I just want to make sure I get them all. 10, 10 Monroe, which is the other property that we bought. So uh, 40 West Main Street was, was, was another one we got. So 40 West Main Street and 9 Church Street tie together. That's a property, and the old fire station, that's a property that was just, that they've all been sold. At the time, they were all available. So those were the only properties that we got. Those were the only submittals we got. The only people who said, uh, uh, yeah, take a look at our land. At the same time, we were looking at 222 West Main Street, because that was up for sale, and that was the corner of Lincoln Street, where they've now had, they've now put, uh, put, put houses up there. We looked at a location on Hudson Street, directly across from Maytech, up on the hill. And that was determined by our then, by the feasibility architect, that that was just not a buildable, buildable area for us too high in the hill, too steep, all that. Uh, so, and I had put forth 6165 West Main Street. So those were all the areas we looked at. And, it, and it, it's, it's really critical for people to understand we didn't exclude anybody. We did make a decision at that time. We were not taking land by eminent domain. We did not think that was the proper way to do it. We don't think that's fair to uh, you know to go tell a, a citizen or, or a property owner we're taking your land for a fire station and we're giving you this much money for it. Um, I, I supported that then, and Val was actually the chair of the committee back then, and I, she supported it at that time, and, and that was really critical. We didn't want to do that. Uh, there is a there are, there have been some parcels of land thrown around. Did you look at this? Did you look at that? We looked at anything people wanted to bring to us, or anything that we knew was currently for sale. That's how we came up with 6165 and 10 Monroe as the best location. Kath, you sat on the committee back mm -hmm. then, am I missing anything? Nope. Right, uh, there was no interest. One of the properties that have been bandied about is 77 Main Street. Uh, they don't have 400 feet of footage of frontage on a, on a, on a public way, that's, that's number one. They don't, uh, it's in a floodplain. Is that Harvey's property? Okay. Uh, it, they, it's not for sale. It wasn't for sale at the time we were doing this. They didn't come forward and say, we're interested. None of that occurred. So we didn't ignore them, they just never came up. So I wanna make sure that's very clear to everyone, mainly to the, to the viewing audience so they understand what the process was. It was a very thorough process, they were all vetted. Not only did these all come in, we then had a site rating matrix that we went through and we reviewed each separate site based on, on and the matrix that was included in the RFI that we sent out so they knew what we were rating it on. So it was a very well done process and that's how we came up with the location that we came up with. Any questions from the members of the, if I may, Madam Chair, through the, through the chair, any questions from the board how we did that? I, don't, I, I know you weren't on the feasibility committee, but um, I just wanted to make it very clear how we got where we were. Yeah, I mean, nobody was excluded. It was no. definitely, everybody was approached that had something that met the criteria that we were looking for, so. Or came close to approaching. <laughs> Even came close, yeah. It came down to two possibilities: your existing site and the current site we're dealing with. Right. So, so and we. Then the decision was made. After right. That. So what happened is we came down to ten West, ten Church Street in combination with us. Seven Pierce was not an option at, in our opinion because to, to combine with it all, the owner of that property wanted to sell the property and the business to us 
because he wanted to value, because he was, which is completely understandable, it's his business, right? He wanted to do that, which put the cost pretty exorbitant. So we decided at that point in time, how can we make this all work? And we took that one, and we took 65, 61, 65, and 10 Monroe. And then we did, an, did another matrix, went through it all, looked at the pros and cons of all sites, uh, accessibility to the highway. We, we did look at the limited. We looked at the site, and we knew where the hill there. Was that going to be a big problem? So we looked at all those things, and it came out without a question, the best option at that point in time. And I still think the best option for us is 61, 65 in combination with, with 10 months. We just want to be really clear on how this came about and how we chose this piece of property. And as was said earlier, this piece of property will work. It, it's a challenge, but every piece of property is a challenge. So. Yeah, even if we went, if for some miraculous reason we decided to go with 77 Main Street, that has its own challenges. For a fire department, I'm going to tell you, and I, I think I think the architects will probably agree with me, and I know the deputy and the captain. I don't care if it's a 500-year floodplain or 100-year floodplain or a 1,000-year floodplain. I've been in a fire service for over 40 years, and I've seen 500-year floodplains flood three years in a row. Um, I'm not building a fire station in a floodplain. It's not a safe. Uh, it's not a safe thing to do, and it's not something I would leave my legacy to for this town. Uh, that was something I would fight to the end. So that's just my opinion on that. Any questions, anyone? Okay, we just felt that everybody, especially the people on the committee, should understand how this site was picked. Yeah. Thank you, Madam so. Chair. Okay. Thanks, Chief. Motion to adjourn. Madam Chair, motion yes. to adjourn the meeting. Thank you. Okay, everybody in favor? Oh, yeah. Aye. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.